Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we are going to start sewing the leather seats of the Alfa Ferrari. All right, I'd just like to take a second out to thank this week's video sponsor, Gentle Bands. And these guys have reimagined the wedding band and uh, they sent me out this uh, this really cool ring. I chose the, uh, the Chateau, which is a tungsten carbide ring that's been painted in rose gold. It's got an inlay of blue-green opal and uh, Either side, it actually has whiskey barrel in it. I really like the uh, the stylus ring. It's a really, really nice ring. Uh, they have a bunch of different styles. They do a bunch of different things, like uh, they've got guitar string inlay. They've got antler and meteorite and all sorts of cool materials. Um, bunch of different styles. You should check them out. Make a great gift, or if you're uh, in the market for wedding rings at the moment, uh, you should check them out, Gentle Bands. They come in this really funky packaging and they currently have a free engraving service. And if you use my code JEFF25 at checkout, uh, you get 25% off. I am very impressed with the, uh, the, the feel and quality of this uh, ring and uh, you should check them out. Gentle bands help out the guys that help out the channel and uh, let's get back onto the Alferrari. All right guys, welcome back. And those watching last week will have seen that I spent a lot of time re-bolstering and then making patterns for my original Alfa seats to be a little bit more supportive uh, in the Alferrari. Uh, if you missed it, I'll put a link above so you can catch up. And please, as always, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, like, comment, hit the bell. All that stuff really does help the channel out. Um, a couple of things with the uh, the seats. Um, yeah, one of the main reasons I mentioned before that I'm keeping the seats is because I do like the style. A, they fit perfectly in the car, and B, the uh, uh, the style with this this really funky wooden headrest. I really uh, I really like that in the car. So. Um, Definitely keeping these. Uh, only real comment, some people were mentioning that uh, because I bolted it up, that it, um, is it still gonna fit in the car? And actually the, the seat is a still is narrower than what it was. I deliberately cut away some of the foam and stuff on the sides of the seat so that it actually would fit in better than before. So um, yes, not concerned about the fitment of the seats. The only other thing that people were commenting on was the, um, uh, the foam in the seat base that I didn't replace it because uh, I adjusted the seat so that it was all comfortable and, uh, and fitting the way I like it, and uh, it didn't need it. It was, uh, it was fine with the extra bolstering and extra foam that I added, that, uh, that's all good. So I'm very, I'm very happy with uh, how that is. So what we're gonna do now, now that I actually have my patterns made, we need to um, go back inside and uh, start looking at making some of this leather fill this space. All right, so I've got my rough pattern here laid out on the floor and it's a whole bit of disjointed bits and pieces. But what I want to concentrate on first is this center panel, which is arguably going to be the hardest part. And that is the Daytona style insert. So um, uh, you would have seen them in Ferrari interiors. It's a, uh, it's a classic Ferrari style that I'm going to try and replicate. And it's uh, probably not going to be the easiest thing, but I have a plan, it's been um, formulating for quite some time, so I'm gonna go through now and start designing up the actual Daytona uh, spacing and style onto this pattern. And then we need to uh, start separating it out into multiple bits, because this is actually not gonna be one piece. This is gonna be made up of multiple pieces to get that Daytona pattern, but it has to end up this shape. So uh, let's start drawing it up and I'll show you what we come up with. All right, so I did some rough sketching out to sort of get my uh, a ballpark of what I'm looking for for the Daytona um, layout. I messed it up. The, the lines aren't in the right exactly right spots, but I do know what I need now, and it doesn't really matter because I don't need to cut it all out of this. What I do need to cut out is cut this curved section, so the Daytona panel 
will be a separate piece. This top bit will be a separate piece, and, and these will actually be one bit for the side, one bit for that side, and the centered rib. So let's start cutting it out and uh, transfer it over and start trying to uh, measure up the actual leather pieces. So you can see I've actually added a gap all the way around the edges of my pattern and uh, particularly the inside edge I've left a 10mm seam allowance. On the outside edge I'm not sure exactly how big it's going to be yet so I've left it a little bit larger than that. I'll go into detail more about this later. So my foam inserts I'm making, I'm actually making a little bit smaller than the pattern, a couple of millimetres just so that uh, there is space for the sewing to make the bulges I need. And you can see there Sasha giving me a bit of a hand with the leather, thinking it's a mat I laid it out for her. Alright, so I've spent a bit of time now getting this all ready and uh, I'll sort of go through my thought process on what, uh, what's going on. So my original pattern is actually this inner line in here. So this inner line is the bit that's going to be seen on the outside. But you need an excess around the edge so that you can sew the two pieces together and they can actually, uh, you know, have something to sew onto. So that, I've done a 10 mil gap around on this side. This edge I've left a bit uh, wide because what I'm going to be doing is adding these foam bits onto the uh, this lower piece of felt that I've used and I'm going to be adding them in uh, sort of these spacings so that when I sew it, there'll be a bulgy section and then the flat strip section so that uh, the, the strips obviously sit down in the, uh, um, in the padding. And it'll make more sense once I start actually sewing it. But what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna glue these bits of foam on and then glue the top bit of leather onto it as well. So it's all glued in one section. And then I'm going to go through and uh, um, sew the whole thing around the edge. And hopefully I have the bulges and I have the low sections where I can sit my um, bands. Alright, so I worked out that by sewing this from the start, from the bottom, actually puts the, the bulge the wrong way around. Because it's pushing it flat, the bulge is happening more on the back than on the front. So this edge is sitting quite flat and there's not much bulge, whereas when I sew from the top, the, uh, the other way around, you can sort of see that there's, there's the bulge that I'm looking for actually came out on the top. Now, um, I went through and just finished sewing this after I knew it was already messed up, so I just rushed it. It's not, uh, it's not as neat as what I would like, but the basic structure is there. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this again and make sure I sew it from the top so I get it more accurate, get everything exactly the way I want it so that, uh, um, yeah, trial and error. It's worth doing, it's worth doing twice. On these first couple, I made the mistake of not making a master pattern that I could use over all of the pieces. And I was spending a lot of time measuring and drawing up every single piece. Making a master pattern, which is what I did later, makes things much, much quicker. After more closely watching some of Ketchaflow's videos, I saw that he was masking out the gaps in between uh, where he was sticking the foam on so that the top and bottom wouldn't stick together when you're sewing it, which actually made a much neater uh, result and that's what I did from then on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
that is perfect that's exactly what i wanted so we've got our nice puffiness there you can see that it's uh, uh it's come out just the way i wanted so i had to sew it from the top to get it right but uh, underneath i've i've got a little bit of excess on this side because i'm going to uh, uh, I know that when you sew it like this, you actually it actually shrinks the uh, obviously it's pulling the uh, the leather in either side, so it will actually make it a little bit smaller than the pattern. So you don't want to uh, cut it exactly the size and then try and put it in and realise it's too small. Uh, so this exactly the way I wanted it, and uh, I have my strips here ready for my day turner inserts. And actually, and I've actually done some practice ones on the time off, and you can see here. This is what I have uh, made up as a practice. And these are going to sit something like that into there. So the black leather with the, uh, uh, the matching stitching, I think it's gonna be perfect. That is looking good, I like it. So, um, all right, now I need to start making up a few of these strips and sewing it together. Although actually there's one thing I have to do first. All right, so um, I just went through and I sewed on a little loop on the back of the, uh, the trim here. And what this loop is actually for is I've got to run a piece of welding wire through. This is the back of the original seat. Um, and what this is for is this goes into a groove that's in the middle of the backrest and you actually go through and, and loop it in. They originally tied it in, I'll probably use cable ties to uh, link this bar, this uh, piece of welding wire that's inside this loop, to a bar that's in the back of the seat to sort of help pin the centre of the seat in against uh, in the back so you get a nice tight finish. So uh, that is what this little strip here is for. So now we need to start making some of these things. So again, this is some more of this uh, very, very nice and very expensive black Ferrari leather that I'm using for these strips. And you can see here that uh, I'm gluing the back of them and then folding them into the center on the back and now using an eight mil punch to punch the holes out at a nice even spacing. All right, and here is my first Daytona stripe, strip, whatever you want to call these things. Uh, punched out with the holes. I used my, it's just an eight mil punch. Just a basic eight mil punch. These things are readily available, they're relatively cheap. And this thing is 20 millimeters wide. To get it 20 millimeters wide, I cut a strip that was 42 and a half millimeters wide, and then um, drew a line down the center of it on the back, and then folded either side over to the middle so that I got this nice even spacing and then marked my, my parts on the front and punched it in the center. So I have the basis for my Daytona strip. And my plan is, is to sew that over the top there and that will be one Daytona strip done. So let's sew this on and hope I don't mess it up. All right, and that's my first result. And uh, to be honest, I think it's it's not perfectly straight and even. It's pretty good. It has pulled it a little bit, and uh, yeah, once it gets in and sitting in properly, the uh, it'll it'll sort of puff around the uh, that that strip. But I think it's just the right amount of recess, so that these things aren't going to be digging into your back. Uh, I am, overall, I think I, I pulled it off. Uh, I did remember to pin up my uh, little strip on the back so that I didn't over sew that in the wrong spot and uh, wreck that completely, so that's all right. So, um, all right, now we need to do three more.
All right, well, that is actually looking the way I wanted it to, and uh, and even feeling it. I can feel that the uh, the black strips actually sit lower than the uh, than the puff. The puffy section, particularly once it's actually got a backing on it that's going to uh, you know, be pulled into the backing. I am very happy with the result. That is one side, just one side. It's taken me almost a whole day. <laughs> but uh, I have one of the Daytona panels made. So for the first seat, I need three more. And then I need to do the whole other seat. So uh, let's get stuck into the others and uh, see if we can do some Daytona panel work. Yeah! All right, and uh, I messed up the second one. I realized after the first couple that I'd messed it up, but I thought I'd try things out anyway. Um, as you can see, the first one is, uh, is, is relatively nice and straight and, uh, uh, and decent. This one, what happened is, um, you can see how sort of crooked some of these bits are and how they're not very even. The issue I had was, um, I think I actually, when I glued these sort of looped around, I press them down really well on this, whereas this one, they're a bit looser. I thought, oh yeah, just, it'll just sew them down into place. The trouble is, is that there was enough, they weren't tight enough, so they had a bit of movement. And also I sewed them one direction, one way, and then turned around and went back the other direction, which has sort of pulled it uh, and, uh, and made some of these, these holes sort of oblong and not, uh, and not very nice. So this one's scrap. Um, thankfully, it's not a very big bit, so, um, I've learned a fair bit about doing this and uh, hopefully this time I can do it right and, uh, and flow through. This hopefully is the hardest bits of the seats. So uh, once I've got these bits together, fingers crossed, the rest flows a little bit smoother, but um, growing pains. And uh, just a tip for those of you wondering what I'm actually using to draw onto the leather, they're actually China Graph pencils. So uh, it's like a wax um, crayon type thing uh, that wipes off of the leather afterwards so it doesn't leave a mark. Got the first bit cut out, so uh, let's uh, cut this out, do the felt, and uh, just keep going. So as I mentioned before, I'm allowing a 10 mil seam allowance on the inside of this panel, but I'm allowing a much bigger seam allowance on the outside because I don't know how much the leather is gonna shrink in by having to go up and over the foam and coming back down again. So I've left myself some extra to play with on the outside so that I can end up with a panel the exact size I need in the end. and I wasn't risking it with the strips this time. I went and stole Mrs. Jeff's rolling pin to make sure that the strips were flat enough. All right, so um, as you saw then, uh, a couple of things that I did on the first one, I sort of skipped on the second one and that was some of my mistake. Uh, I didn't, you might have seen I masked up um, the bits that I didn't want the foam on, so I didn't, it's not glued in the middle between this, in this sort of open section here, so that it doesn't sort of stick together when I don't want it to. So uh, that was one of the things that uh, I think I messed up on that previous one. And also, uh, you might have seen, I used the rolling pin on these. Once I glued the, uh, the strips together, I used the rolling pin. So I'm just gonna mark them out now and uh, punch the holes, and then we'll try and sew again and see if I can not mess it up this time.
All right, just shows that uh, taking my time and doing it properly um, makes a really good result. That's the best one I've done yet. And uh, yeah, doing them both in the same direction, making sure I had a nicely uh, pressed down uh, piece of strip. And uh, yeah, that worked out really nicely. So uh, I'm just gonna take my time, go through and do the rest of uh, these strips. And then hopefully I have the backrest of one seat done. Well, there we go, we have the back of one seat done. Um, yeah, I, I just love the colors. I love the, um, the, the, the quality of leather and I'm very happy with the result. So um, I think what I wanna do is I wanna do the center bar. So there's, a, there's like a, gonna be a solid center strip through the, the middle of this seat. I wanna do that and sew this piece together and get this center panel done and then we can move on and I think I'm just gonna run through and just do Daytona inserts for the entire interior and uh, look at doing the rest of the seats and stuff later. And I was so confident, I just started walking away and then realized the little uh, <laughs> wire lug that I put on the, uh, the first one I cut it out and I set it next to it and I forgot to sew it on ahead of time. So that's not on there. And if I sew it, this all finished nicely on the top. So what I think I'm gonna try is I'm gonna try and hand stitch it onto the back here and uh, hopefully that will do the job. I might actually sew it together like it loose like this and then hand stitch it on. So let's do that. Crisis averted, I managed to uh, stitch it on by hand, so that's all on there now and that's going to do the job. So we can move on to the other panels. <sighs> so my pattern strip in the vinyl was actually 35 millimeters, but I actually uh, did the leather strip at 37 millimeters wide in the middle to allow for it to come up and over the foam so it can shrink in on the sides. And then I also out allowed a 10 millimeter seam allowance on either side to sew it to the Daytona panels. So here is where my 10 millimeter seam allowances come into play, because I've got the 10 mil seam allowance on the Daytona panel and the center strip, and that allows me to line up both outer edges and sew along that 10 millimeter seam line and get them perfectly lined up top and bottom. All right, another mistake I just made is I actually had the, uh, the sides sewn all together and then I looked at it and they weren't perfectly aligned. It was only out by uh, a tiny amount, but it was enough to be noticeable and I just wasn't happy with it. Thankfully, uh, the seam is sort of hidden, so I managed to cut it apart, and I'm gonna go through now and uh, rule my lines on the back across so that I can get the, uh, the join perfectly even all the way along and uh, not make that mistake again. So, uh, another tip. Thankfully, uh, I didn't ruin the entire piece. Much better. Now it's all lined up. Uh, that looks really good. That is a Daytona insert, the way it's supposed to look. I am, I am very, very happy with um, yeah my first go. This is definitely the most advanced trimming I've ever tried, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with the uh, the outcome. Um, obviously, there's still a long way to go before the seats are done, but this is a really complicated part, and I've done one of four of these things. So that's the back of the driver's seat. I need to do the base of the driver's seat and then the back and the base of the passenger seat. So uh, now I know what I'm doing. Let's uh, plow in and get all of these bits done. Yeah.
This time I was smarter and made all of my perfect measurements on my master pattern. So I can just lie that over the top of each piece and uh, put all of my measurements over onto the final pieces. Made cutting things out much, much faster. All right, second one's down. The base of the seat came out really good. Um, yeah, I'm definitely learning the way to do this now, so it's definitely getting a little bit smoother. It does take a whole heap of time to measure out and, uh, and sort of cut and draw up the patterns. So um, that is the, the time consuming part, but um, we are coming along. I thought I would quickly, because I know I'm gonna get questions about it, uh, talk about my sewing machine. Now, on my first project on the 911, I actually bought an industrial sewing machine. I just went on a gum tree and bought an industrial sewing machine. And it was the wrong type of sewing machine. It could do the job, it did very small stitches, and it turns out it was actually a machine that was designed to sew clothing very quickly. And, and, uh, and that type of machine, rather than this, which is more designed for the leather and things like that. Um, it's about, this is about at its limit for uh, this sort of the, the, the thickness of all this leather, particularly when I've got these um, going over these straps and joining all this together. It's uh, one, two, three, four, four layers of leather plus foam plus felt. It's, it's quite a thick um, bit that we're actually sewing together, but uh, it's, uh, it's plowing on through. It's got caught a couple of times, but it's not too bad. This machine has potentially has a lot more function than even most uh, professional motor trimmers have. It was not cheap, but I bought it secondhand off of a friend, uh, Manny at CCU, who um, who has a bunch of different machines and didn't uh, didn't need this one. It's Chinese. It's probably not the highest quality, but um, the functionality is fantastic. So it actually has a, it's actually a digital machine. So. Um, as opposed to just having a motor that just sort of runs as you press the pedal. This has a whole bunch of features that are very, very cool that makes uh, doing this stuff a lot quicker. So to give you a quick, uh, a quick tour of, of this particular machine, um, I've got a little knee rest here that I just push sideways and that lifts up the foot. So I can push that across and put the, uh, the foot inside. And the computer control here tells the, uh, the machine that when I start, I just have to touch the pedal once, and that did about uh, five stitches. So it did, um, I think it's two forward, two stitches forward, three stitches back, two stitches forward, and it has started the stitch. So often when you start um, stitching with, with most sewing machines, you have to physically stitch sort of two stitches forward, then um, put the machine in reverse and stitch a couple of stitches in reverse and then put it forward again. This machine does it all automatically. And uh, then um, the other function it has is that whenever you let it go and it stops, if I lift that foot up, the needle is in. The needle always finishes down. So if I wanna sew at a 90 degree angle, I can turn the, the thing around and then start again. And it is still, the needle is in and I can do, you know, corners and things like that very easily. So, so the other really cool function is if I actually press the pedal backwards, that has actually digitally finished off the stitch and cut the thread off. So I don't have to pull it out and cut the thread off and all that sort of stuff. So it's quite an advanced, it's, it's an expensive machine, uh, but uh, you know, it's super handy for doing this sort of thing. Um, for example, I did diamond stitching in the Datsun that I did and uh, being able to just start and stop automatically without having to tie off every end of every bit of diamond stitching makes it uh, really good. So um, you really need to make sure you've got a machine that can handle the weight of the leather and the right type of industrial machine. I said, I'm very happy with this one. 
uh, it's probably overkill for the amount I use, but if I factor in what it would have cost me to pay somebody to do this job, um, it more than pays the machine. So that's uh, two of my panels done. So that's the seat of the driver's seat, um, the base. So now I need to do the back and the base of the passenger seat. All right, well that took a lot of time, very time consuming, but very rewarding. I am very happy with the results. We have four panels now. Um, one, two, three, four. Uh, that will do the back and the seat base of both seats. So um, that turned out much better than I was hoping. That was that actually worked. <laughs> but I'm definitely out of time. So I think that means it's time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, Ferrari's Halo car started arguably with the 288 GTO and then the F40 and then the F50 and then finally the fourth Halo car was released in 2002 and it was named the Enzo. Named after the company's founder, the Enzo was built using Formula One technology with a carbon fiber body, carbon ceramic brakes and even active aero. It was powered by Ferrari's all new F140 6 liter 650 horsepower V12 engine which was based on the Maserati Ferrari V8, the successor to this engine. It was designed by Ken Okuyama, head of design at Pininfarina. Taking cues from Formula One cars with its underbody flaps, suffuser and rear spoiler, they make a huge 350 kilos of downforce at 200 k's an hour. Production of the car was limited to 399 units and it was only offered to customers who had previously bought an F40 and F50. Interestingly, all of these cars were sold before they were even produced. A 400th car was however built, but it was donated to the Vatican where it was auctioned off for charity. It has a, a love it or hate it look, but it does remain the last naturally aspirated V12 hypercar that Ferrari is ever likely to build. I am so happy with the progress this week. These came out so much better than I expected. I mean, this is what I was hoping, but I just didn't know whether I could pull it off. And uh, yeah, I really, I really like the uh, the trimming part of it. It's just, uh, it's such a different skill to sort of try and wrap my head around, but I, I, I really enjoy doing it, so. We like the color combo. Yeah, oh, it's just, ah, it's so good. It's so good, I like it. It's, nice to have a coffee. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like, like coffee and licorice. It's delicious. Mm, delicious. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, subscribe, let Jeff know what you think. He's particularly about his sewing technique, because I mean, that's, yeah, no. like <laughs> it's 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 something that I'm I'm practicing and uh, yeah, and I I really enjoy getting better at it and uh, yeah, this is definitely coming out the way I hoped. So uh, keep hope an eye out for a clothing line coming up soon. And as somebody did mention, yes, I mean maybe handbags even. Fashion, yeah, no, it's not me. <laughs> uh, hopefully, we'll see some more next week. Um, like, subscribe, Patreon if you would like to support him and. Um, and see the videos the day before everybody else. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you next time. See you guys. The Ferrari F288 G288. G no, no, no. And, was that okay? Yep. Damn it! <laughs> it was powered by Ferrari's all new 160. It was powered by Ferrari. <laughs> it was powered by f <laughs> 650 horsepower. 12 V8. <laughs> V12. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm terrified.